Hey, everybody. Welcome to Spiel Chicago, the podcast exploring feminist work in Chicago theater. My name is Smyra Yan, and I am here with today's guest host, Avi Roquet. Hello. I'm Hi. happy to be back. Yes. <laughs> so this has sort of been, this episode has been a little while in production. We kind of had talked about this idea of having a group of trans performers come on. And yeah. I mean, <laughs> community is a big word. And also like in discussion about doing something like this and just getting a group of trans identif uh, trans identified folks into the room it's it's important because we're getting people's individual experiences but at the same time we're hearing a lot of commonalities and so since everything's so new it was just everything is so new right now with like trans inclusivity um, being a topic of discussion it's just so beautiful to be someone right now that is like trying to do the work or be with these people that are, are friends and colleagues, but people that are also doing the work too. So it's just really like rewarding. And even though like I come off as a person sometimes that might appear like I have everything figured out, like I don't. And so to hear other people's stories too, it helps me feel less alone. And I hope that if anything, this helps other trans actors feel less alone. Yeah. I cannot thank you enough for doing this with me. The conversation was so interesting and smart and beautiful, and I'm really excited to share it. Yay! Thank All you right. so much. <laughs> All right. So my name is Avi Roque. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. Yeah, I'm I'm a human actor, artist, activist, educator. Sometimes not always willingly, but um, you know, it's it's a thing. But uh, yeah, I think at the core, I'm an artist and a creator. I'm Jojo Brown, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. I am Charlie Baker. My pronouns are he, him, his. I do musical improv. I am in a 40-minute rock opera that is completely improvised. Uh, I also do Shakespeare, which is also unrehearsed, because apparently I don't like time commitments. Uh, and I also do a, an activist ally vlog on YouTube. I'm Theo Germain, and my pronouns are they, them, theirs. I also am an actor, creator, maker person. I have also done some activist work as well as education, just like Avi said, sometimes <laughs> not really because I want to. Do you remember the first show you saw, like a play, the first play or yeah. show or... <laughs> Go ahead. Dive, anyway. It might not have been the first one that I saw, but I remember being very young and my family was taking us downtown to a theater and we all thought we were going to go see like the Wild Thornberries movie or whatever, like a Nickelodeon movie. And I was like horrified when we stepped in and it wasn't a movie theater. I was like, what is this? I don't want to see a boring play. And it was Seussical the Musical. <laughs> and um, there's a character in that show named jojo mm -hmm. and that's oh that's like my name yeah. and um and like jojo sings this song about feeling alone in the universe or whatever and i was like it me and um yeah and then it's funny because the first professional um theater audition i did was when i was 10 years old and it was for jojo and susical the musical mm -hmm. uh, my aunt lives in new york and we went to see beauty and the beast on broadway and the only thing I really remember is being terrified by the wolves that chase Belle. They scared the ever-loving soul. Can I curse on here? The just ever-loving <laughs> fuck out of me. Uh, oh my god. That and like to this day, anytime that I see Beauty and the Beast the musical, like that happens, and my heart just kind of goes a little bit faster. And I remind my I am. And the thing is, like, I'm a movement person. I love people like doing weird shit and like animal costumes. Like, I want to be one, but I don't want to watch it. <laughs> I'll share. I mean, I don't want to go into detail, but I think it was a production of a Christmas Carol at a church. <laughs> so cool. um you know, I think first seeing like live kind of like theater or performance, but um, I think then it wasn't the acting bug I don't think bit me until like I was in sixth grade and we did a play, you know, and it, that was when I was like, no, this is something I'm interested in. I want to do. The first musical that I ever saw live <laughs> was Cats. Yes. 
Um, yeah. So I was really, really obsessed with the movie, with the filmed version of Cats, and like knew the movie like the back of, or knew the the filmed musical like the back of my hand. I had all the, I had all like the snack commercials memorized mm. before like the show started. Um, and my grandparents uh, got me a ticket, got me tickets to see Cats when it came to the Rosemont, I think. And uh, not only had, did I know this movie really well and I was really into it, but I was actually obsessed with it. So I went to the musical <laughs> dressed up. Yes, you did. In costume. <laughs> as a cat. Um, as, as a, a cat. cat. I had, I remember Which exactly. One? I remember, I don't know. I don't, I, well, I just, it was the only leotard that I had. <laughs> um, so I, I, the leotard, it was, it was leopard on top and it was black on the bottom. And I had a leopard scarf that I tied around my waist for a tail. And then I had little gloves on with little cuts, you know, cut like fingerless gloves. And then I had um, like lion ears and then I painted my face and I was like, if I do this right, <laughs> they will think I'm a cast member <laughs> and no. they will pull me on stage. <laughs> um, which didn't happen, but I really loved the show and ate so many good and plenties when I was in the audience. And uh, yeah, it was cats. Fun fact, I have a rumble teaser wig that my friend made me in high school because I was also You should let me wear it. You should let me wear it. My favorite was Mr. Mistopheles, yes. but I think I also learned a lot about my sexuality with cats because I was like, they're all really androgynous so and they're really hot. And also I think that's me at the same time. So like cats also taught me about my gender identity. Just saying. Thank you, cats. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> You know, this is something like uh, I personally have been like exploring and dissecting and looking at because oftentimes we know that being actors were we're battling or artists were just battling a lot of perceptions and people's ideas and and a societal structure. You know, so this question: What does it mean to be trans, and what does trans look like? I think that for I mean, for me, the the beauty of transness is that it means so many different things and it, it looks like everything definitively I guess for me it would be sort of just that that marker and that assessment that a doctor made from one quick glance at infancy isn't an accurate description of who we are as people I think that well one thing that comes to mind when I think about what is transness to speak in a in a, in a broad sense is um it's about not making an assumption. There's so much that I've been conditioned with, um, and it's looking at a person that you see on the street and not making any assumptions about them because I think a lot of people have this idea that, oh, trans looks this way on one end of the spectrum or looks this way on one end of the spectrum. And I found that there's so much that even I need to unpack about. If I see someone on the street and I immediately want to gender them, how do I stop myself from doing from doing that. I mean, I'm sure everyone in the room has a lot of that happening to them, but I always try to think about, and me too, but I try to think about like, how can I not participate in that? But it's with just not making assumptions. It's an awakening because whenever you pick your name at 25 and realize who that is, you realize that you can pick your name at 25 and you realize how much of a narrative you created over a couple of syllables. And it's being free of that and realizing that Everyone around you creates these narratives around themselves. A oh. traditional narrative around trans people that's sort of been the way that transness has been spoken about for so many years. It never allowed me to, to view my gender and like my life in that way until a certain point. Because when I was young, um, I read about the story of one other young trans woman. But this sort of definition was like, I... Uh, look at girls in magazines and I don't think they're beautiful and I'm not attracted to them. I want to be them. And I read that and I was like, I'm relating to, to some of, I was really young and I remembered relating to a lot of themes in the article, but thinking, well, I can't be that because I, I am attracted to women, mm. you know? So then, then we fall into this, like it's tied in with sexuality totally. as well. Yeah. And also it's just this very sort of like cis normative, way of viewing something that that can't always be packaged that easily you know 
-hmm. it's not you know for me transitioning wasn't transitioning from one gender to the other gender it was transitioning yeah. from uh, from from point a to from, point b from point a to point b you yeah. know like transitioning to myself like yeah. not a woman i'm not like becoming a woman you know it's kind of just like i realized that 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 is me you know and people have been telling you the wrong thing the whole time for sure. and, and you know it's not so much that like i felt like a woman trapped in like a boy's body as much as i didn't know that there were any other yeah options for me and i thought you know that narrative i thought that i had to hate my body in order to be trans i thought well i'm comfortable with my body i like the way that it is well i must not be trans because i don't want to change it and that's not the case for for everybody What is the intersection of being trans and being an actor? I like this question. Because um, I knew that I was an actor before I realized that I had a race or a gender. I, I knew I was an actor from as early as I could remember and that that was what I wanted to do. And a lot of the theater that we have out there and a lot of the plays that have been written are written in a very sort of rigid binary fashion. I mean, even if we go back to like older classic American theater, so much of the text and the dialogue is like, well, boys do this and girls do that. And that's the funny thing about you girls and you boys. And I think that I, I felt that in order to be marketable and in order to do what I love and in order to have a platform and do that, I had to fit into one of those boxes. Mm -hmm. So I focused a lot of my time and energy growing up into passing as a straight white male. Those are the roles with the meaty text. Those are the roles mm -hmm. that get to be all types of thing. Well, you know, mm -hmm. I get to be, I could be a badass or I could be awkward and nerdy or I could be this and that. Whereas I wasn't seeing myself, my actual self represented in anything. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know it's how like kind of like I not so much of this business is like be yourself be yourself but like how can i be myself when i don't feel like there's a space that's been carved out to be, to be myself you know and it, i feel like it's it's a it's been a struggle <laughs> but yeah well and then whenever it's not there the impotence is put on you why don't you just write those roles why don't you create those roles for yourself <sighs> we were chatting we're about trying. that this that's like, what i'm doing right trying. yes yeah. you try but then sometimes it's like you don't always want to feel that responsibility and that the onus is on you right it's like to have I'm to... a little busy right now I yeah, i'm a little <laughs> I'm I'm a lot of things not yes. well. jojo was yeah. in a play that i wrote oh, oh. <laughs> and it was yeah. great it was fun. and it was fun and i got to like just be a badass like yeah. in a like apocalypse yes. awesome story yes. and it didn't you know, it yeah. didn't really matter. Like, yeah, I mean, I think I think, yeah, bigger, you know, regional theaters or places with budgets or write a programs, I think, need to start cultivating writers that have or are living or have lived or, you know, within the trans experience. I just think that's we don't. I don't think a lot of the writers don't exist. The people that should be writing. And I think that they ought to <laughs> do that, not just like to meet a diversity quota. No, yeah, yeah, but yeah because don't do that. I think yeah. that cis people are doing <laughs> to give them themselves a, a the disservice yeah. by not yeah. including us. I mm -hmm. agree with that a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. there's a certain richness mm -hmm. that that absolutely that that can bring into these narratives and yeah. stories. It's a little follow-up question here. How does it impact your relationship to performing? How does it impact your opportunities? I feel like it cuts both ways. Okay. Uh, at once, I am now able to play the roles I always actually wanted to play and mm -hmm. not the ones I just had to play or play those roles really well for a woman. Um, however, I do musical improv and I'm pubescent and my voice is cracking. And so I don't have that confidence anymore of being able to just hit those notes because in my head i still have my old register so while i at once have more confidence and uh am more settled within myself walking into a room there are those moments where i can't quite do the thing or sometimes i can't be in a show because it's too problematic and will do harm to myself or mm -hmm. the my community the community as sure. it were right problematic <laughs> I can say Go something else about the about that question is um, there's there's a lot of maneuvering to be done 
like if you go into an audition and it's someone if it's with someone you don't know it's like okay how are they going to respond to this how are they going to respond to this gestures around face mm-hmm. and body um <laughs> right or like I, w- I spent like my first year here I spent so much time being like okay what do I you know what can I do to just fit into some sort of box so that maybe I'll get into the show and then that will be good for career and like blah 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 and that was that I think that was really kind of harmful um and also it's like I think that Chicago theater and Chicago f- like film are very different. I think that all of us have maybe been in the room for theater auditions, but not as often for like TV auditions. Mm-hmm. I will say like Chicago TV sure. is like, what is trans? What <laughs> is, what? No, Absolutely. we don't want you. But Los Angeles and New York are like, oh, okay, maybe we would give that a shot. Mm-hmm. Um, something that's happened as a white trans person is I will get hired as the sole trans person of a theater, you know, in a production and everyone will pat themselves on the back and be like, we're being diverse. And I'm like, you, 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 it's not, it, you're still potentially participating in perpetuating white supremacy by only hiring white trans people. I'm just going to say it. Definitely participating. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not, you know, in, in, I think we, when working on projects, um, I always think about what is the good it is doing and what is the bad it is continuing to perpetuate. And I think a lot of, um, there's not a lot of discussion about the, about the second part of that, if that makes sense. So can you recall an experience you've had that is unique to being a trans actor? something that other artists may not experience or think about. About the same time that I came out, I got cast in a production that I was very excited about. Um, The character that I was playing was like technically a man. Um, So I was in a sort of situation where, you know, I was using my pronouns at the time were they, them, theirs, and I would remind, you know, my very first day I made it a point to like sort of email everyone and like make sure that they knew that and I I tried to remind people a lot and no no one really ever um used my pronouns during that process but I was in a weird situation where you know the character that I was playing his pronouns were he him his so I didn't feel like I was allowed to correct people on the pronouns because Mm. they were talking about the character you know Mm. but they would be speaking about Uh, me it's weird to be perceived as trans and still have people see that, but not sort of know how to speak about it. Hetty Weiss called me a sexually ambiguous zombie. Oh, um, Jesus. <laughs> and I was like, actually. Are you gonna put that on your website? It's actually, <laughs> it is on my profile um, <laughs> for my, yes, yeah. That's, I was gonna say, I, it still happens where I work on a show and someone's like, wow, I never met someone <laughs> like you before. When are you gonna have the surgery? <laughs> oh, <laughs> like God. it happened last year. I was working on a show and someone was like, oh, "Wow, I've never met someone like you before." And I was like, "You don't get out much." Oh, right? wow. yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, that's like I don't know if if cisgender people maybe encounter something like you know like that specifically. I mean, I suppose it's the experience, even though it wasn't in a show. It was whenever I was, uh, I had accepted that I because I, I always knew that I wanted to transition I finally accepted that I wanted to transition and I thought that that also meant accepting that I was going to be completely uncastable for about a year and a half mm-hmm. which has proved not to be true at all uh-huh. which is wonderful mm-hmm. however I had to have the very real conversation with myself myself who defines me as a creator and so I am my creations and creations don't have genders and I had to pick myself as a creation in that moment over any songwriting I might do. I didn't know if I'd ever be able to sing again. Uh, mm. I didn't know how I would turn out looking, sounding, any of it, except for watching people on YouTube mm-hmm. and seeing, oh, this is attainable. Um, but it really, really took watching other positive narratives on YouTube mm. to see that I wouldn't end up as some, like, as I perceived at the time, like sideshow freak, as it were. Let's talk about like 
what do you feel the Chicago theater or just the acting industry in general can do to do better uh, with regards to trans inclusivity? Can you stop telling coming out stories all the time and just begin to transition because I don't need more coming of age stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just keep thinking it's a really specific moment that I just want. I'm a big sci-fi fan. And I really want to just see like a ship exploding and a trans man freaking out because he needs to go grab his testosterone before the ship explodes because they're not near any planets that have like medical tents on them. Just show the minor stuff about being trans. Make characters more than trans. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of like the beginning of queer characters or any sort of honestly right. inclusion of minority. Yeah. It's we're told that we have to accept baby steps, and that's not true. Yeah. Also, yeah. please stop casting cis people. Mm -hmm. Please. That's absolutely that unacceptable. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Even even my like I, my dad texted me a couple of days ago, and he was like, "It just makes me so mad that that they cast people that are not transgender as 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 transgender people." And I was like, "Dad." Me too. <laughs> We're on the same page about this. We might not have the same political beliefs, but like, dude, good job. Aww. Yeah, I completely agree with that. To hearken to some of like the the activist circles that I've operated in, or just like if I'm ever doing that kind of work, um, a lot of people uh, operate off of, and I think this is how it should be, operate off of the model of the most vulnerable person in the situation is the person that needs to be centered. And in that case, it would not be white trans people. It would definitely be trans people of color. And I think that there's some disagreement within the Chicago community. It's that baby step sort of thing. We need to make, we need to make some sort of progress and it usually ends up being white progress first, mm -hmm. telling historical stories about white trans people versus yeah. fostering new works that are centering people that are more vulnerable. Um, uh, I don't really know where else to go from there, but operating off of, the most vulnerable person goes first is the right way to go. Being a trans actor of color, like being Latinx and like all of this, it's like there are those intersections is the reality of my brown skin. And like I do just keep seeing a white lens over all these trans stories. And, Absolutely. And to hearken back to what I said at the very, very, very beginning when people were like, what do you do? That is one of the reasons why I am interested in maybe moving in a different direction because I am trying to figure out the best way to be useful as a white trans person, and I don't believe mm. to I don't believe exclusively existing within theater is the right thing to do. There is a lot of whitewashing, but also it's it's not just that it's only an inclusion of white people's narratives; it's very much an exclusion of black narratives. Mm -hmm. And um, I think even, you know, the fact that there isn't, you know, a black person on this panel mm -hmm. could even be seen as a problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, there are all ways in which we can uplift each other and create space for each other. And not because we like feel like we have to, but because our everyone will be better off because of it. Something that I've sort of faced disagreement with other folks in my community regarding is um, I know a lot of binary trans people who don't really believe in a fluidity and they do believe that there are two genders, you know, etc. And I think that, you know, ooh, it's like a huge part of me thinks that a lot of that is internalized oppression and that a lot of that is just wanting to fit into cis culture and wanting to you know survive in that way but it really ticks me off it's 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 this weird situation where i do identify as non-binary but i think that i am perceived in many circles as a binary transgender woman because i identify with the word woman and i mm -hmm. use you know pronouns that mm -hmm. are typical of sure. a feminine or woman person or presentation just or, yeah, yeah what's being you know performed. and yeah. my and my presentation as well sure. and i think that um i i mm. feel silenced in those discussions mm. very often it hurts it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> make sense to me how how someone with that experience of being trans could find it so unbelievable or unrealistic to be non-binary I, you know, very much want to be an advocate or an activist and be out in those front lines. I, I sort of think of it more, though, that, you know, that is that is a part of me and what I want to do in the world and my tools to do that 
are my art. So it's advocacy through art, a huge part of the violence that I enacted on myself and that others enacted on me my whole life was due to a lack of representation in the arts. Mm -hmm. So I think that, um, you know, I'm not trying to like save the world by being <laughs> visible. And there's also, you know, I mean, even if I wasn't trans, like I've always wanted to be an actor, I'm going to do it. But like at the same time, if transgender youth of color can see me in a production mm -hmm. and know that they can do whatever the fuck they mm -hmm. want mm -hmm. and not despite who they are that who they are can even help them mm -hmm. that's i mean that's that for me is the the activism or advocacy that i'm doing yeah. you know yeah. um but then it, it it is a lot of pressure though you absolutely. know absolutely yeah so exhausting <laughs> you know and to to sort of have to almost be like perfect trans you in, have to in be a way. the constant example because the minute you get too emotional or misstep or say something wrong right. or you're invalidated mm -hmm. quote unquote right. by your feelings and people like are a lot quicker to something. dispose yeah. of us yeah, yeah in that way you know mm -hmm. it, well it's an excuse to be dismissive mm -hmm. and it's an excuse mm -hmm. but i agree 100 percent. where i've found that i come from a long line of teachers and i'm finding education through art um i don't feel guilt i just have a hard time taking myself seriously it's really, really hard to go, yeah, I'm going to go to my room and like film myself for two hours and then edit myself for three hours. And then I'm going to like write a bunch of words in really pretty ways and it's going to change the world. But it totally is because <laughs> I know that I needed that and I just keep remembering what it meant to me. And I have to constantly give myself a pep talk and get over myself because I just feel like I have to be the positive experience that both I want in the world for myself and others. I just wanted to say that like, I, I, I don't know, to be all like mushy for a moment that I, just like having seen Jojo and Avi perform before, it's like super exciting and super important and, and seeing it is like, <gasps> and it's really awesome. I just wanted to say that. Okay, so what can your peers and fellow artists do to be better? <laughs> or to do better? Uh, listen. Listen. Yeah. Ah, active listen listening. and believe. Listen, yes. believe. Stay educated is what I say. The mm. simplest thing you can do. If you do absolutely nothing else. Uh, Which you shouldn't. <laughs> Which you shouldn't. Because, be, because being ally is an active verb. Yes. Being is a doing word. Yeah. Uh, but if the bare minimum listen and stay educated and the best way to stay educated is to listen and believe mm. i think in stop thinking it would be fun to play a trans person oh god please fun or oh edgy god, so hard <laughs> it's what a challenge wow um <clears throat> you're so brave and then they're gonna win all the awards um please stop saying <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jojo. Sorry. No, it's okay. I got caught up in the salt that I like okay. forgot. What was the question again? Because I, I totally <laughs> had an your, answer. How can your peers or fellow artists, like, what can they do? I think that people really need to embrace being wrong. You know, I like to think of myself as like sort of really having a good grasp on, on things and really understanding things and having like a strong set of like principles based on my beliefs about society and the world. But mm. Every time that I'm called out, I really, I do, I ha I'll have that moment of like, but I'm one of the good ones. And I really need to see it as that, as like a sort of childish, like momentary thing that I'm allowed to have to myself. But like, if I can't see why I'm wrong, I will spend as much time as it takes to, to convince myself that there's more that I could be seeing, you know? And because there is always more that we could be seeing, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like, for me, what like discovering that I was trans or whatever was coming out was it was almost like this whole nother dimension, you know, like if you exist in a two dimensional world, you can't even imagine that third dimension. So when we hear something that we really disagree with, like, well, maybe you just can't imagine it right now because it's not a part of your mm -hmm. world. Yeah. Being uninformed or misinformed and being called out on that might feel really embarrassing. Get over yourself. Acknowledge that happens take the moment of education as an act of love because this person is taking the time and going out of their way to educate you. 
Mm -hmm. I've never educated anyone because I so felt the inclination and just yeah. had the burning desire <laughs> to teach the world about my personal trans experience. Yeah. I just really didn't want you to misgender me or call me transsexual. Mm -hmm. Also, please, please stop feeling the need to play devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let the conversations that need to happen happen where they need to happen. Please stop making me use my personal experience against your hypothetical situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Stop doing so much Shakespeare. Wait, no, wait, wait, wait. No. I love Shakespeare. And the first time that I played a role as my gender, it was in a Shakespeare play. My middle I, name is I'm, from Shakespeare. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, okay. I'm just... I, I feel you, though. I feel you. I can respect. I'm kidding. I'm I disagree, kidding. I'm but kidding. I respect. Yeah, this ahead. is where I disagree within the trans community. Okay. <laughs> More Shakespeare. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't a mean bit, to shut that no, down. No, 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 no. This is, this, is this is what I really mean. This isn't... Maybe this isn't directly connected to... to transness etc but like doing doing dead white playwright stuff that's what i mean yes. it's like stop doing that or, or if you Absolutely. really or if you really really are going to do it cast every single actor as a trans actor like only trans people <laughs> <laughs> that's my advice know that question dream roles are there i mean not necessarily a dream role but something maybe you're you want to create or you want to do something that exists already but it's technically three but it's one character arc okay henry four part one and two prince hal into playing henry the fifth you had that ready i love it I, I <laughs> you're yeah because the arc is so beautiful because it is uh the Prince Hal has this really famous monologue uh, that I started using as my vocal benchmark when I started transitioning of how my voice was changing. Uh, my middle name is Henry from Henry V because it was the show that got me involved in Shakespeare and changed my life in so many other ways. And just that arc of being this kind of lag about miscreant, self-fulfilling prophecy of a failure into one of the better kings of England. <laughs> um is just beautiful and the self-confidence and that he finds within himself i've just always been very inspired by and the humility and sense of mortality that goes with it my dream role is to play jojo the vampire slayer i want there to be like a sort of reboot of the buffy series um, and this was, I mean, I'm just a huge Buffy fan or whatever. And like, I'm, I'm stupid. I'm just like, oh my God, like Buffy helped me come out or whatever. But, um, I saw like a tweet a few years ago from the creator of that series, Joss Whedon. Um, someone had tweeted at him, like, what do you need to have? Like to be the vampire slayer or something. And his response was like super, it was, it was transphobic and and i was like well that's stupid because i mean that show like it's not like a very serious show it's super campy super fun but like a lot of the themes on it are about like fate and like mm. there's like a sense of like spirituality to it so it kind of surprised me that that was his response because i mean why why would we like get into biological essentialism in a show about fucking killing vampires and like people being like born as the vampire slayer and stuff also a note of genre just going back to that guy in the exploding spaceship that one oh, sci-fi yes sci-fi sci is yes. so trans and it's interesting that we're like a lot of our dream roles here are roles that have not been written yet exactly. and i think that that's it's yeah it's kind of cool in a way it's yeah. also like exactly different yeah. <laughs> i think <laughs> i think that if there was any character i could magically like just play in like It'd be me instead of the actor. Um, I, I don't remember what his name is in Mr. Robot. Um, does anyone watch Mr. Robot? Whoever like I've like clips like the lead character, like the guy, the hacker man guy. Like I want to be him. I want to be like the socially right. Like like I find myself wanting to play a lot of male characters because it's something I've never had access to. But then I'm also like, am I just perpetuating something bad by just wanting to play all these characters? But, you know, I don't know. I think about that. Well, but um, but I, I would think sometimes it's like given the options. Right. It's the one that might fit that might more fit. than right. comfortable yeah. than the other, right. you know? Well, whoever, what is his name? I don't know. He's really hot. The actor's really hot, so he should just keep doing it. But if he decides to quit, I'll do it. Okay. How 
speaking of projects, um, y'all are brilliant and amazing. And I adore each and every one of you. So again, thank you for being here. And um, it means a lot, you know. And so um, what things are you working on? Do you have any projects? I can't uh, say. Just, you know, plug. Okay, if you can't say, that's okay. But I'll be around. Okay. Theo's going to be around. So, but you have projects on the horizon. Yes. I'll okay. be working on a couple of things now, potentially through next summer. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm, Booked. Wow. <laughs> well, yes. Um, I, well, I will say I am working on a couple of short films. I can say that. Um, I'm actually working on a really awesome queer, trans, kink, kinky, positive uh, film that is being directed and worked on by Molly Hewitt, who's a performance artist. Um uh, I'm going to be playing like a sub who is trans and like it's going to be like cool and different. Uh, in November, actually, Anarchy, the troupe that does the 40 minute improvised rock opera, is having a month long run at the Annoyance Theater Sweet. every Tuesday. That's dope. Nice. Congrats. So we'll come. We'll make a group. Also, Trans <laughs> Eye vlog. Work yes. on that on the yes. YouTube. That's right. So, my off Broadway debut happens this year. Beautiful. Happened. Congratulations. It's happening. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm I'm uh terrified. Um um What show are you doing off Broadway if you can say? It's called Charm. It's written by Philip Dawkins. It's going it's directed by Will Davis, who yeah. we spoke of earlier, <laughs> who I've wanted to work with since I met him. Actually, I heard about this play and I thought to myself, I want to be in that play. They had a run here in happened. Chicago. Yeah, North yeah. Light Theater did mm -hmm. it um, at the Steppenwolf Garage. And it's about a bunch of transgender and queer youth at the center on Halstead. It's loosely based, pretty directly based on like a true story, but the names and things are changed. But it's about this woman, Gloria Allen, who used to teach etiquette courses to youth at the center on Halstead. And the play is, uh, it's an interesting look into that, into that world. And why I'm really excited about this play is that it's a community on stage. I've never um, been in a production with all trans people. Mm -hmm. And um, I've sort of had to advocate myself or cling onto the one other trans person in the room. Um, and I, I feel like there's not going to be a lot of that in this. And yeah. That's what's up. Yes. 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 Right. And then Theo, I know you thought of something. Oh, a project. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to be working on Welcome to Jesus um, with Will Davis at American <laughs> Theater Company, which was written by, yeah, it's Janine Neighbors, a, a new play. It's about, um, it's pretty much about like small towns and like whiteness and racism and things like that so it's about a small very small religious conservative town in texas and i actually get to play the high school football star yes. which is like a dream Question. is yeah. to play boys is like that so yeah. um i don't remember what it's called it's a fictional town in texas but it's like based off of you know so i like get to play boys and it's great I love it. yeah Congrats too. Yes. Thanks. Beautiful. How about you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Avi. Avi, you should tell us what you're doing. Um, Avi. I'm going to be in um, the Crucible for Steppenwolf's SYA show yes. in October. I'm doing Ezekiel Cheever and Mercy Lewis. Yes. Wow. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how, yeah. how, we, how that's created. But I mean, Hey, you know, yeah, first Steppenwolf gig. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, yes. Um, and then I'm assistant directing still for a play happening at Timeline yeah. called Boy. And then also I'm working with Will again, too, for... I wondered if you were going we're to... We're going to be okay in, That's in what Basil's I, play. That's what I thought. Ooh. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm play, uh, Jake. So oh the, my god, the, I'm so the excited. The teeny angst, but like popular guy in school. <laughs> so like, yeah, that feels like interesting. That. But again, I without that Will, gonna happen. I don't think I would be seen in at any other big theater That's, company mm -hmm. as that role. Everyone, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay! <laughs> we clap. All right, good night. Bye. <laughs>
You can find out more about Avi, Theo, Jojo, and Charlie on our show page, including other work that they've got coming up. If you enjoyed today's episode, please give us a review on iTunes. That is a huge, huge help in spreading the word about the show. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter for more fun feminist theater content. And be sure to join us in two weeks for a conversation with award-winning poet and actress Irian Roach about her experience in youth theater here in Chicago. We are interested in casting um, plays with people who are the ages that they are. So if the character is 17, get a junior in high school to play them. That's in two weeks back here on Spiel Chicago. Thanks again for listening, everybody. See you at the theater.